Oceanic ecosystems are threatened by a lack of science-based fishery management today. For example, 34% of the world's major commercial fish species are overfished, and more than $23 billion of seafood is stolen annually from the sea through illegal and unregulated fishing, also causing habitat destruction. This is why a free website called globalfishingwatch.org was launched by Google in partnership with other organizations, such as Oceana and SkyTruth in 2016 to monitor fishing activity globally and make it transparent to anyone online for free. They use satellite technology, cloud computing, and machine learning in order to find navigation patterns using a public signal received by a GPS-like device called the Automatic Identification System, or AIS, used by the vessels in the sea. You can imagine tracking 60 million points from vessels worldwide quickly grows into a big data problem. So let's dive in and see how to approach the problem. Thanks to data, today we can understand our natural world with far greater richness than ever before, by orders of magnitude. This now empowers us to build amazing apps that can help us solve complex social and environmental challenges. And so in this series, let's build an app together. Meet Brian, who's worked at Google for over 14 years. He's the co-founder of Global Fishing Watch. So to understand why we did Global Fishing Watch, we first really had to understand what the state of fishing at a global level was in the world. And the stats were pretty sobering. So when you think of something like a tuna or a swordfish, about 90% of that species has disappeared in the last generation or two. And when you look at fish that actually end up on a plate, they talk about how about one in five or 20% of those is considered IUU. So illegal, unreported, or unregulated. And then when you finally look at fisheries themselves, they say that about 90 plus percent of them are either at capacity, overfished, or trying to recover. So when we started Global Fishing Watch, I like to say that it wasn't possible three years earlier. It was barely feasible when Global Fishing Watch was starting. And now we, we wonder how we didn't do it sooner. And from a pure technology and machine learning perspective, our first versions of this were rough heuristics that gave us a rough sense of where a vessel might be. And now machine learning has evolved so far so that we're able to not only see whether or not a vessel is fishing based on how it's moving, but we're also able to differentiate the type of fishing that they're doing. And so we've continued to stay on the cutting edge of machine learning as it applies to the fundamental conservation issues or policy issues that we're addressing with fishing. I love this project and definitely recommend leveraging all the extensive work the amazing Global Fishing Watch teams have made accessible on their website as well as on their beautiful YouTube channel. So within Google, I feel really lucky that I get to work on a team whose focus is to make a positive change in the world from an environmental or societal perspective. I honestly don't think this would have been possible without Google willing to invest in something like phishing that isn't something that you would normally associate with Google. At the end of the day, it was about making information universally accessible and digestible, very much part of our mission. So to actually build Global Phishing Watch, we've really used the full suite of Google Cloud Platform products. Fundamentally, BigQuery was the only tool that was out there that was enabling us to look at billions and billions of these ship position reports and be able to look at them not only over time, but also spatially. Just storing that alone was the type of thing that didn't scale to a lot of other areas, but then the ability to go in and analyze it in near real time, so it enables an analyst to kind of see how this is unfolding and tweak their algorithms as necessary. And if you're curious about how to make a time series classification app that includes latitude and longitudinal data, let me give you a quick tour using Google Cloud Tools. Let's start with a snapshot of the products used. First up is Apache Beam, which is an open source library that you run on Google's data processing service called Dataflow to create two data sets needed for machine learning. One is for training and the other for evaluation. Next is TensorFlow Keras, which is a high level API library used to define a machine learning model where we then train in Vertex AI. As for the data, we get this from Global Fishing Watch's GitHub repository. 
It includes a ship's unique identifier called Maritime Mobile Service Identity, or MMSI, which was broadcasted at different times along with its lat-long coordinates, distance from shore and port, its speed, and its course at different times of the day. The irregularity in time in which the data is collected then requires us to transform it into even hourly intervals, which we call time steps. The model uses a one-dimensional, fully convolutional network, FCN, because it enables us to feed a variable number of hourly time steps. It assesses patterns in the vessel's movements within each window of time, and as an output, it labels whether it is fishing or not. Now, for this type of supervised learning, we need training data that has fishing labels. And Global Fishing Watch performed the labor of love of manually investigating and then producing over 140,000 label time ranges. And for context, even though that's a tiny subset relative to the massive data set, it's more than enough to build a model. Next, we create the training and evaluation data sets in parallel via an Apache Beam pipeline running on Dataflow. Now, from a data preparation standpoint, we ideally want to feed the model raw data that resembles what we get from the field in order to get predictions as new data arrives. Next, we define the model using Keras and train it on Vertex AI, which is an API with a client library and user interface that enables you to train, save, deploy, and request predictions. After our model is trained, we save it in cloud storage and can either load it into a Python app, deploy it as an endpoint in Vertex AI, or in a web app using Cloud Run serverless infrastructure. We visualize the predictions in a free Jupyter notebook called CoLab using a map visualization library. We can see the ship moving and changing color when it's fishing and when it's not according to the predictions. So what's next? Well, in this video's description is a detailed blog post, some friendly links, and most importantly, an awesome lab built in collaboration with my peer David, which contains all the code needed so you do not have to write a single line and can interact with the map yourself. If you found this content helpful, by the way, you can subscribe or leave a comment on other AI for good use cases you have in mind. And community, before we end, I'm gonna leave you with Brian's fun fact about the project. It's really shaped kind of the way I go out and the way I interact with nature now. Um, and it, it just makes me really kind of figure out what, what's around the corner for the next thing. And there's so many incredible stories of seeing what happens when you simply put information in the hands of others and how they go on and take that into other areas.